Amen. And so today we're, 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 we're continuing, but, but I, I, I want to just look at some things that, 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 you know, that we have talked about, because we talked about this choice, and we talked about the choice in Deuteronomy, and then uh, uh, making that choice when we choose Jesus. And, and, and so when we, when we choose Jesus, there's some things that we have to remember. When we choose Jesus, we automatically choose to be resurrected with him from life to death. When we choose Jesus, we, we, we choose salvation. We choose to be saved. We choose to love God, obey God, and be totally committed to God. We choose that when we choose Jesus. We, we choose to be blessed. Stop acting like you're not blessed. Not, stop acting like you, you can't be blessed. You, when you choose Jesus, you choose to be blessed. We choose to sanctify ourselves through the word of God. We choose to do that. We choose to set ourselves apart. We choose to sanctify ourselves through the word of God. We choose to be holy. God said, be ye holy for I am holy. And when we choose Jesus, we choose to obey him and we choose to be holy. We choose to receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We choose to welcome uh, uh, him into this place. Uh, you you got to make it personal. You've got to, you know, you point your hands at yourself and say, you, you choose to welcome the Holy Spirit into this place. I, I choose to welcome him in, into this place. Hallelujah. We choose that. You, you choose to be a vessel uh, that is welcoming uh, uh, and, 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 and receptive of the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? amen. We choose to be freed from the 613 laws uh, uh, in the Old Testament. We choose that. We choose to be freed from, from that. And, and, and we choose to live a life filled with love. We choose to live a life filled with love. And, 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 and we, are, we, we, we are guarding that. We are, uh, hallelujah, we, we, you know, we put a force field, force shield, hallelujah, around anything that's going to affect me living a life full of love. It does not matter what others do to me. See, Jesus knew about this day. He knew this time was going to come. He understood what was going to happen. And he understood that uh, 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 your, your, momentarily, your momentary respect, your mo momentary feelings, your mom it, it, it has nothing to do with your eternal life. That's why he said, love your enemy. That's why he said, do good to them that despitefully use you. That's why he said, if one hits you on the one cheek, offer the other. That's why he said, if they take your coat, offer the cloak too. That's why he said, that's why he said it, because he knew we was going to be living in a messed up world that, that, that was going to take more than it gives. But, but he said, don't worry about getting from them. You can get from me and you can get all you need. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, there's some people that ain't going to never like you. There's some people that ain't going to never respect you. There's some things that's just going to always be against you. But, uh, but, but understand this. Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And so with God on my side, who can be against me? I don't care about that. So you got to understand. You got to understand something is that, you know, the, the more you lean into Jesus, the worse it's going to get. And, and, and so you're going to have, you're going to have, you know, if, if you're African-American, you're going to have some, 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 some doubles for your trouble. You're going you're gonna to be African-American and you're going to be a Christian and they're going to hate you for your skin color and what you believe. So you just better get ready for it and lean into Jesus. You better lean into Jesus because that's where your power is. You better lean into Jesus because that's where your help going to come from. You, look, look, I... Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I won't change, too. Don't get me wrong. I won't change, too. Hallelujah. I, won't, I want everything that's promised to me, but I, but, I, uh, but I understand something, too, that that word of God is true. And, 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 and even if, you better get this, you better get the wisdom of this, even if the African-American, the black man, gives everything and the respect and everything that he's supposed to have in this world, you as a Christian will not. You as a Christian will not. Jesus said they're going to hate you because they hate me. And so, you, so, so just, just, just understand, there's some, some things that's just not going to change. Well, all right, all right. I, I, look, I'm just telling you the truth. And so 
Today, what we have to choose, because we, we, we get all these things uh, 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 automatically, everything that I talked about, we, but, but again, we choose to, to live a life filled with love. But, but understand this, you have to choose to be delivered. You, you have to choose to be delivered. When I say that right now, each and every one of you, 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 you understand what it means personally to you, what you need to be delivered from. Hallelujah. What I need to be delivered from is not what you need to be delivered from, but, 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 but make no mistake, we all need to be delivered. We all need to choose to be, to be delivered. Not looking for deliverance, to be delivered. We choose to be delivered. I choose, I choose to be, I choose to be delivered because, because my choice comes with deliverance. My choice for Jesus, it automatically comes with deliverance. It's like you don't have to expect, you don't have to wonder whether or not your child going to get a, a toy and a Happy Meal. It comes with it. You ain't got to pay extra for that. It's already included. And so, I, I, you know, so, so deliverance automatically comes with, 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 with my choice of Jesus. Look at this. Deliverance is rescue from captivity. Rescue from hardship. Rescue uh, 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 from, from, from domination by evil. And, and oh yes, amen. All of us, all of us lived in that. All of us was in that. All of us, but prior to accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior, all of us needed to be delivered. All of us needed deliverance. But I want you to know that when you chose Jesus, it came with the package. You, you, you look, 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 look. The only way that a Christian can be saved but not yet delivered. And that's made up. That, that ain't in the Bible. You ain't gonna never find that in the Bible. I'm saved, but I'm not yet delivered. The only way a Christian can be saved but not yet but delivered is because you don't understand the choices you made when you cho chose Jesus. You don't understand the choices you get when you, when you chose Jesus. You don't understand, hallelujah, the, the, the entire package. You, you, think, you, you, know, you, you walking around with a Happy Meal and, and don't even expect the toy in it. You don't, you, you don't even expect the burger in it. You happy with the box. But you get a little bit more than the box. And I want you to know deliverance is included in what we get when we choose Jesus. Can somebody say amen? amen. I want you to see something. It's something that we looked at last week. But we want to look at it with some different eyes. We want to look at, look, Jesus promised deliverance. And, and, and remember, remember, he said, I'll tell you the truth. He, he came back to restore that. If I say it, it's going to be done. He promised deliverance. Look, at Luke 4, 18 and 19, he said, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He said, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty <clears throat> them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. We, 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 look, I, you know, I, I, I get deliverance. It comes, it comes with the, with the package. Hallelujah. I, you cannot be saved and, and, but not yet be delivered. You can't be saved and talking about, I, but I'm, I'm, but I'm not delivered yet. That doesn't coincide with, you know, that, that, that doesn't agree with what Jesus just said that he came to do. And if he came to do it, and, and when he died on the cross, he said it is finished. Guess what? It's finished. You, you ain't got to wait. It's already done. You, when you receive him, you get deliverance. And so, 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 so if you somebody that's walking around with this made up designation, I'm saved but not yet delivered. And you know, you, 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 know, you, 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 you give deference to people. You, you allow people to act the fool in the church. And you, and you say, well, they saved but they not yet delivered. No, they delivered, they just don't want to walk in it. Or they don't understand that they are delivered. So, what, so, 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 so if you, you walk around, you, 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 what you are is somebody who is saved but you have no understanding of the freedom Jesus was anointed to give you the the freedom, uh, uh, you know, the the the, the, the freedom, the, the the deliverance that Jesus said he was he was anointed to give you. He said, "I'm anointed. Spirit of upon, Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to deliver you from what you in." So what is that? That's a recovery, a, a healing, liberty, whatever that is, whatever you need to be delivered from. He said, "I'm anointed to do that." 
And so if you walk around talking about you, you saved but not yet delivered, you make Jesus a liar. You make Jesus a liar. You make it, you make it seem like, well, we, well, Jesus can deliver some, but he can't deliver me. Well, Jesus can, you know, well, well, you know, he just ain't got around to me yet. No, when he put deliverance in this world, he put it in on all of us at the same time. When you accept him, you get the power to be delivered. Because he said, that's what he said he was going to do. And so, and so what happens is, for a lot of Christians, uh, 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 you live as a captive of your past because you don't know how to be free. You still, you still feeling bound up with something that come from your past, something that came when you had a sinful nature, something that came when you was living as a sinner, and you still feel like that thing got a hold of you, and that thing is like, I ain't got no power, but if you're going if you gonna let, still let me around if you're gonna still you know if you're gonna still bow down to me then I'm gonna still act like I got some power but and, and, and so it's kind of like it's kind of like some you know when we was free you know when slaves was free uh, uh, back in the 1800s there was some still on plantations that hadn't got the message yet so even though they was freed even though the, the ink was dry on the on, uh, on, on the declaration hallelujah it, it, it didn't make a difference they were still walking around acting like they were slaves because they didn't know and so some of us is still walking around a uh, uh, slave to sin, uh, uh, a slave to things that, that you was freed from. And, and, and I, I can only imagine that it's because you don't know. Well, I'm here to tell you that you don't have to be slave to that no more. Uh, the, re the reason why I ain't say what it was, because you know what it is. You know what you still think got a hold on you. You still think, you know, you, you, you still think you, you got to do something. You still, you got to drink. You got to smoke. You got to have sex with, with somebody that ain't your, ain't your husband or your wife. You still think, you, you know, because oh, I can't, you know, I can't live. No, cause you, I can't live without, I can't live without the, this and that and that. I can't live. That's because you couldn't live without it back then. But you won't let yourself live without it now. Because you don't know that you delivered and you set free. Ooh, but I'm here to tell you, you're free. Come on, you might as well just say it to yourself right now. I'm free. I'm free. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on. Write it on Facebook. Don't text me on my phone. Write it, on, write it on Facebook so I see it. Write it on Facebook so I see it with everybody else's. And I understand what you're saying to me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Last week I said, text me. And somebody sent me a text. I look at my phone. I said, well, I wonder why they sent me this. And they said, well, you said text me. So I said, well, no, write it on Facebook so I see it. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so we, 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 we want to know how to be saved in our present so, so, so we can be excited about our future. That's some of us not even excited. You're, not, you're a Christian. You're walking with Jesus. You're not even excited about your future. You're walking around letting this world tell you uh, 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 you don't have no future. You're you letting this world tell you that ain't nothing good for you and ain't nothing going to happen to you. Ain't nothing ever going to happen. And, and you're walking around with the power. You're walking around with Jesus. You're walking around with the one that has everything, but you ain't excited about your future because you don't know you've been delivered from your past and, and, and you're walking in freedom in your present. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. And so what makes it worse, if that ain't bad enough, what makes it worse is that if, if, if you think you fit in the made-up category of saved and not yet delivered, then you can't fulfill your assignment given to you by Jesus. Because you're walking around in, in something that he never intended for you to walk around in. And so if, 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 if you're walking around in something that's man-made, then you can't deal with, 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 with your assignment that came uh, 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 from the Son of God. And I don't know about you, but, 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 but I want to please him. I want to please Jesus. I don't know about you, but I want to please Jesus. And I want to walk in the assignment that, that he gave me. Thank you, Jesus. So on this Pentecost Sunday, I knew y'all knew I was going to get there. I'm going to mention it a little bit. On this Pentecost Sunday, know that, 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 that the power is here for you to walk in your assignment and, and and you have to understand you can walk in your assignment because Jesus has already fulfilled his assignment in you he's already fulfilled his assignment in you you've been delivered 
And because you've been delivered, you can now walk in your assignment. You can now be a witness for him. You can now, hallelujah, uh, 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 act like the day of Pentecost meant something to you. It, 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 it should mean something to you because, because of that day, because of when it happened in history, we, we, we are able to walk in, uh, we, are, we are able to walk in uh, with power uh, uh, this deliverance that we received from Jesus. Oh, oh, can you say amen? Go ahead, say amen, amen, amen. Look at Acts 1 and 8. We're some familiar scripture, but you, you, got to, you, you got to realize it. You've got to internalize it. You've got to accept it to be who you are, regardless of what goes on in this world. Regardless of what goes on in your house, in your job, uh, in your marriage, with your kids, regardless of what goes on, Acts 1 and 8 is your assignment. And, and, and you can't get rid of the assignment uh, 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 because of you. You can't get rid of the, rid of the assignment be, because of your selfish reasons. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And, and, and you will be my witnesses. That's Jesus talking. He ain't talking about you. He, he, you. You can't be your own witness. You got to be, you got to be Jesus' witnesses telling people about uh, uh, him everywhere in Jerusalem, ju throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of, uh, uh, of the earth. You have to be a witness for Jesus no matter what it is that you're doing. No matter where you are going, no matter who you are seeing, it, you have to be a witness for Jesus. You just, you, 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 just, you know, if you're know, if, if you a tattoo person, then that's the tattoo you need. You a witness. You got to be a witness. If you need a reminder, then get a tattoo. I don't care. But, but, you know, all this other stuff, people put on them and all that. that you don't need to remember. You need to remember, I am a witness for Jesus, that, that I have to represent Jesus, that I'm an ambassador for Jesus. That, that's what you need to remember because you can't take a break. Ain't no taking a break. You chose this. You can't take no break. You take a break when you ain't serious. You take a break when you, ain't, when you ain't connected. You take a break before you make the covenant. You take a break before you make, take the marriage, make, you know, to say the vow. You don't, you don't take no break after you made the commitment. Oh, I won't take a break. We need a separation. No, get on out of here. You ain't committed, get on, get on out of here. You can't tell nobody that in, in you can't tell nobody that uh, uh, in the natural that, you know what, I want to take a break from our relationship. I want to do whatever I want to do and I'll be back. It'd be like, oh no, give me the key. Give me the key. Go on, get on out of here. Take your break and keep your break and stay on your break. And that's what God is saying. Some of y'all, some of y'all taking breaks. Talking about I ain't get, I ain't, I ain't get delivered. No, you, you need to turn the key. Get on out of here. Go back through the door. Oh, thank you. Turn, yeah, turn in the key. Hallelujah. Y'all get that. Pray that it get, go on, turn in. You ain't doing it anyway. Hallelujah. So a Christian, a Christian who will not receive and walk in deliverance cannot walk in the power to be a witness for Jesus. If, 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 if you cannot, if you will not receive and walk in deliverance, deliverance from who you were and deliver from what you used to do, if you can't walk in that, uh, uh, then, then, then you cannot walk in the power to be a witness for Jesus because they, they go together. And so, and, and the reason you can't do it is because you have no confidence. You, you have no confidence in, in, in the word. You have no confidence in, in, in your relationship with the Lord. You have no confidence uh, in, in who God is. And, 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 and you have no confidence because you keep telling yourself that you are a work in progress. I know y'all heard that before. That's made up too. It's a made up designation. I'm a work in progress. Where is that? When Jesus said he finished the work. You ain't no work in progress. See, the thing is, we get that confused. We think that that means that I don't have to do any work. No, the work that was finished is what Jesus did. But you, you, you're not a work in progress. Oh, thank you, Jesus. When you, look, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are a finished work. You are a finished work that only needs to be submitted. Somebody going to get that. Somebody in school going to get that. You are, you're a finished work that only needs to be submitted. See, because all finished work needs to be submitted in order to get, get or receive the acknowledgement for the work. You see, you got to submit yourself to God to show that the work has been finished in you that Jesus did. 
And you don't have to do anything but receive what Jesus did, but you submit yourself to God to show that the work has been done. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. See, that's why, that's why you got to submit yourself to God. Submit yourself to God. James 4 and 7. Submit yourself to God. Therefore, to, a, a, a resist the devil and he will flee from you. You got to, you got, you, you got to say, God, here I am. God, God, I, I, here I am, saved, sanctified, filled with the precious Holy Ghost. I know that you said in your word that, 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 that if I do this, that, 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 that I don't have to worry about all that. I, 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 I am submitted to you. Tell me what I need to do. Tell me where I need to go. Tell me what I need to apply to, my, to, to myself. Go, I need the wisdom. I, 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 I'm praying. I, 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 need all, I need all of this in my life because I don't want to be who I used to be. I don't want to act like I used to act. I don't want to be, I don't want to be. Tied up and bound up to the things I used to be bound up to. I don't want it coming back. So I submit myself to you. I'm a finished work. Jesus did it in my life. Hallelujah. I don't have to worry about it, but I got to be submitted to you so you can see that. that, 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 that. Give, give me a grade. Go on. Give me a grade. Give me, give, I, I, want you, I need you to see the results. I need you to tell me. And he said, if you do that and then you stand in, and resist the devil, he's going to flee. Why is he going to flee? Because he's going to see that you are you, you, you finished work. He's going to see that you have been submitted to God for the grade and the grade is passing grade and the devil got to leave. The devil can't mess with something that is fully, fully completed. Hallelujah. He can't mess with a finished work. But you got to submit yourself to God and, and resist the devil so that, so that he can get on away from you hallelujah 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 he ain't go the devil will not flee unless you submit to the finished work of jesus in you to god and so in the midst of what you're going through and i know everybody's going through a lot i did not the, the bible does not say submission to god a submission of the finished work means that your problems and situations are going to go away you got to submit yourself to God in the midst of everything that's going at you that makes you want to go back and be who you used to be. You still got to say, I'm a finished work. I don't have to do that anymore. I'm a finished work. I'm free from fussing and fighting and, and cussing. And I'm, 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 I'm free from that. And so even though it's there and it, it, it wants me to come and it's tempting me to come, I'm, I'm a finished work. I got the power. I don't have to go back to that. I've been submitted to God. I submitted the finished work to God. Devil, you got to flee. I resist all temptation to do what you what you trying to get me to do oh yes amen and so in the midst of what you're going through stand up stand stand on the word resist regardless of what you feel like doing because this world will make you feel like doing a whole lot of stuff and that's what you got to that, that's the resisting that's what the resisting you 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 when you were it ain't just like devil i resist you no no it's 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 me I resist me being trying to cuss somebody, trying to fuss somebody, trying to fight somebody, trying to get revenge. I'm, I, the resisting, you, you know, I'm resisting the devil trying to get in me. You know, you, you know, you gotta make, you gotta understand. You know, you ain't just, well, you ain't gonna see no pitchfork and no horns. And, and I resist you, devil, get on the way from. No, he already there. He already in your ear. He already telling you some things that that you should do and, and things that you shouldn't do. And and and, and you gotta resist him. The temptation is real. Look at, look at James. We talked about this last week. But we want to look at this in, 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 this, in these eyes. Hallelujah. James chapter 1, look at verse 12. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. What are you doing uh, uh, patiently enduring the testing and temptation you're resisting the testing and the temptation you're resisting what the devil is trying to throw at you that's why i submit myself to god now i resist the devil what am i resisting i'm resisting the testing and the temptation because i love god i want to obey god and i want to be totally committed to god so I resisted, patiently enduring, hallelujah. Look at, look at 13 and 15. He says, and remember when you are being tempted, do not say God is tempting me. Remember, we talked about this. He says, God is never tempted to do wrong and he never tempts anyone else. So you understand that the temptation is what has to be resisted. The temptation is wrong. One, the, the big reason you know it's wrong because it didn't come from God. Not only does he, he, he tempt, he does not tempt, but he is not tempted to do evil. Hallelujah. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. 
Our own desires entice us and drag us away. Our own desires entice us and drag us away. That's what we got to resist, being enticed and being dragged away from what we want to do. You're never going to be dragged away from something that you don't want to do. You, you ain't going, you ain't going, you going, you're going to be dragged into something that you already have a desire to do. Why? Because you used to do it. Why? Because you used to like doing it. Why? Because you know it was wrong, but, but now the, it, it, it's trying to drag you and tempt you and bring you back into that, but you have the power to stand strong. You have the power once you've submitted because Jesus delivered you from it. You don't got to go back to it. You've delivered from it, and you have the power, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost power, right? The power of love, the power that I need to not need the 613. I got all of that in me that, that I, don't, I don't have to sin. I don't have to go back into that, but you got to understand who you are. You got to understand the power that you have. You've got to be able to see this thing and understand it's a trick of the enemy. And all he's trying to do is get me to not be able to go to heaven. And, and, and that's his ultimate goal. Well, I'll praise the Lord. So it says, these desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin, sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Temptation comes to pervert desires that are already there. Now, now, now I said I want to talk about something. And when, when the Bible says God, God is never tempted to do wrong. And he never tempts anyone else. Right? He, he, he never tempts anyone, and, and he's never tempted to do wrong. Temptation is not the sin. The sin is the sinful action or the selfish, self-willed or selfish action. It's the simple, or, it, or, or it could be self-willed or selfish. Why is self-willed or selfish just as bad as sin? Because you, you chose Jesus. You said, I'm going to love God, obey God, and be totally committed to God. That's why Jesus had to say, not my will, but thy will be done. Because even Jesus, if Jesus acted selfish and, and, and just thought about himself, then, 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 then he would be out of line with God because he needed to say, not my will, but thy will be done. And see, the thing is, selfishness is just as bad as sin in a relationship with God. I want you to see something. I want you to see something. Uh, uh, the Bible says, 1 John 2 and 16, for all that is in the world, the lust, of the, uh, uh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The lust, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are the three things that, that even if you can't say, if, if, if it identifies with a specific, a, a, a specific sin, if it, idea, if it lines up with these, it, it ain't of God. And so we got to be just as careful of, uh, of selfishness as we do sin. Because, because we said we're going to be totally committed to God. And, 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 and selfishness uh, 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 violates that commitment, that choice, uh, uh, when we chose God and when we chose Jesus. And so selfishness, you got you to understand that because selfishness is just as bad. Selfishness in any area. Well, I got to get mine, you know. Oh, I got to have a Jimmy day. I got to make sure I'm taken care of. I got to make sure, you know, you got to understand. If, if you got to take care of you at the expense of God, something wrong with that. You better understand. You better, you better get the wisdom of that because if I got to put God on the shelf in order to take care of Jimmy, something wrong with Jimmy. Amen. All right, all right, all right. You ain't got to listen to me if you want to. And so, so, so understand, the devil can take advantage of the simplest things that make them sin if they fall into those categories. It, it, it makes it sin. Why does it make it sin? Because you, it, he turns you into a liar. You said you was going to be totally committed to God. You said you was going to love him, obey him, be totally committed to him. When he can make you do something that doesn't fall into those categories by using lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, he now makes you a liar. He, he now makes you someone who made a vow to God but's not keeping the vow, and so you're a liar. That's why it's a sin. Thank you, Holy Ghost. All right, look, 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 look. Look at Matthew 4, 1 to 4. We want to look at something. We want to look at how, how you know, because remember, I, I said this, and I want you to see something. That I said, temptation is not the sin. It's the, the sin is the sinful action or, or, or the self-willed or selfish action. So you got to get that, and you got to understand, because this, this, this makes you understand. Because I was a little confused about these scriptures when I read them, because it's like, I, why, those, why those temptations? I don't understand. Why those temptations? Uh, uh, look at this, Matthew 4, 1 to 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. Why did he need to be tempted by the devil? Why couldn't God? Because God said, I don't tempt anybody, and I'm not tempted. 
I don't tempt anybody and I'm not tempted by evil. Right? So, so he can't be tempted by God, so he was led there to be tempted by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became very hungry. It says, during that time, the devil came and said to him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Now, now, now look, Jesus said no. The scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. First of all, the thing we want to know is, is why in the world is this a temptation? Why in the world is this, why, why is turning a, a, bre- a stone into bread a temptation? And, 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 and why in the world is the devil asking him to turn bread into stone? I mean, can you imagine if the devil, you know, that, that ain't no temptation that I worry about. I don't know about you, but I don't worry about, uh, uh, you know, man, I might, I might make a mistake today and turn some stone into bread. So, it, it, so it, it's not even a temptation that we need to be worried about. So why is it even here in the Bible? Well, the thing is, is that the devil was, 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 was dealing with the lust of the flesh with Jesus. You can only be tempted by, you can only be tempted by your own desire. Jesus never had a sin nature. Jesus used to have a, he had a deity nature. And, 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 and so he had the power, he had the power to be able to turn stone into bread. That's why, they, that's why the devil was asking him to do that. None of us could do that. He, he had that power and so, so he's asking him to do something for his own selfish reasons using his power. Man, come on, if you were the son of God, you, you, can, you can make anything happen. You can do anything you want. And so go on and do it. And Jesus is saying, hey, man don't look but live by bread alone, but, but, but everything that proceeds out of the mouth of God. But what he was trying to do was affect his deity nature. Now, we know Jesus, we know Jesus did miracles and he did and, and, and open up blinded eyes and, 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 and did all these things to people. But he always said, I do this for the will of the Father. The devil was trying to get him to do something using his deity power, which he gave up to come down here for his own selfish reasons. And Jesus said, hey, no, I, I ain't falling for that. So you got to understand something. You know, when, when, when people start thinking that Jesus was, 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 was tempted to do all the nasty stuff that we used to do, that's a lot. Because he didn't have that nature. He never, you're, you're only tempted by your own desire and, and he didn't have that desire. He didn't come with it. He didn't come with a sin nature. Well, we're going to look at some of those. Look, look at that. Look, look, look at Matthew 4, 5 to 7. He says, and the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, if you're the son of God, jump off. Devil can't get me to jump off no building because I ain't, I, you know, because, and here's the reason. He, he said, for the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Look, that, that was again talking about his deity. That was again talking about who he is and that if he jumped, the devil, I mean the angels will, will rescue him. But again, he's trying to make him do something uh, uh, that was pride of life. Oh, yeah, I'm the son of man, and, and, and you know what? Them angels will listen to me, so I'm going to jump off and, and, and go and watch that happen because, I, yeah, I am. I am him. I, yeah, and I, that wouldn't do nothing but do nothing for him, show pride in himself, and that's what, that's what the devil was trying to get when he quoted scripture, that's Psalm 91. In case y'all didn't know, the devil quoted Psalm 91 to get Jesus uh, uh, to do something selfish to only think about himself. Look it up if you want. Hallelujah. And so Jesus said, no, uh-uh. That's pride of life. I'm not going to do that. Again, trying to get him uh, uh, to, 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 to go back to his desire. You know, you know if, you was, if you was used to snapping your fingers and stuff happening. You know you was. That, that's something. You know, now you got to walk and you could have just appeared somewhere. And, 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 and now you got to worry about food and you got to worry. And you, so you know that Jesus was like, man, I was, I was in heaven. I was son of God. I, and I, I, so you know that was a desire. That's what the devil was trying to get with him. His last one, look at this. He said, and then the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and said, I will give it all to you. Again, trying to appeal to his authority. All the kingdoms of, of all the world, all the kingdoms of all, all the kingdoms of all the world, he ain't got to, he tell us, I give you Cleveland Heights, I'll be happy. He tell you, I give you 
Ohio, you know, you got to give me all the kingdoms of all the world. But he said, see, nothing, nothing else would have satisfied Jesus in his deity state. I want it because he came for everything and, and, and he died for everybody. So you got to understand something. And, 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 I, and I'm showing you this to understand that the, the, the devil's going to hit you where you are. And, and, and so you got to understand. So, 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 so look at this. Look, look, look. So, so lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. All of these came to tempt him or pervert desires that were already there. To tempt him and pervert desires that were already there. But understand, his desires are not our desires, but the temptation. What he went through and how he handled the temptation. See, that's the thing. We're not look, we don't look at those scriptures to look at how he was tempted. We look at the scriptures to see how he dealt with temptation because that's where we can learn from Jesus. That's where we understand. When, when, when the Bible says, um, uh, uh, you know, when it talks about submit to God, resist the devil that, so that he can flee, he, we understand that Jesus gives us this example. He gives us uh, the blueprint for, for doing it. Look, I, I, I understand that it's a selfish reason. You, you got to understand something. If, if what you want to do is, 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 is only to satisfy you and not God, it's a selfish reason. Yeah. And so you, you should say no to it because, you know, if God's not going to get the glory out of it, then you should say no to it. But, but if what you want to do is something that, that, that's going to glorify God while you do it, then, then you know, that, that's how you, that's the litmus test. That's how you question, uh, you know, because some people will be like, well, 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 why can't I do it? You know, well, you know, it don't say I can't do it in the Bible, but why can't I do it? And, 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 and it's kind of like you need, to, you need to do a test for it. Is it, to, is, is it to satisfy you or is it to satisfy God? Because selfishness is going to make you a liar. Selfishness will make you a liar and that will make you sin. So you've got to understand, you've got to understand that. You may not find the sin in what you want to do, but if the sin takes you away from God, then it makes you a liar to what you said you were going to do for God. Love him, obey him, and be totally committed to him. And so, even though Jesus didn't go through the same type of temptation, the process for dealing with it is the same with ours. With Jesus, the devil, uh, the, the, the devil still tempted him with his past. He tempted him with his deity nature. With us, he tempts us with our sin nature. Both of them are the past. Uh, of, you know, in that situation, uh, it was the past. And, and our sin nature was, was, was cut away by Jesus. It's the past. But the devil still tempts us with the sin nature. Why do I say that Jesus was tempted with his deity nature? Let's look at Philippians 2, 6-11. The Bible says this, though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. He couldn't think of it as something to cling to and be, and be fully man. And so he had to let it go in order to be fully man. It says, instead, he gave up his divine privileges. And so, you know, instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. He gave up his deity. He gave up his deity nature. It says, when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God. He submitted himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all names that, that, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue Declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so he, 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 it wasn't that he couldn't use his supernatural powers because he did use them throughout his, 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 the, the three years of his ministry. He did use it uh, uh, to turn the water to wine. He did. But, but even then, it was not for selfish reasons. The devil is only going to try to get you to do something that is only selfish for you. Something that you will only be the one to get the benefit out of and God won't get the glory out of. And, 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 and if, you, if you do not resist him, then you will not be submitted to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at, look at, look at 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. God made him who knew no sin 
to be sin on our behalf so that in him we might become the righteousness of, of God. Jesus didn't know any sin, so Jesus couldn't be tempted by sin, but Jesus was tempted by his deity nature. You gotta understand, the devil will use what he can to turn against you so that you can turn against God. And if he could do it, to, to do it with Jesus, that's, then he can do it with you. So that's why we have to understand that when, 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 when people try to say that, you know, Jesus was tempted by, uh, 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 you know, sex and tempted drugs and alcohol. He, he wasn't because he didn't have a sin nature. But he was tempted. That's why the Bible says he went to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Uh, he was led by the Spirit so he could be tempted hallelujah, with the only thing that the devil could tempt him with, his deity nature. But he showed us that just as he was a finished work, we we're a finished work. And, and, and just as he rose with all power, we rose with all power. And just as he said no, we can say no. You are not. You are, you, you are not a work in progress. You are not saved but not yet delivered. You are completed. You just need to be able to walk in the word. Just walk in the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look at this last one. Look at this last. It says, the temptations, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. So I, I went down a little bit. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. So because you got to understand is that if, when, when you see this and understand this, you don't have to be a drug addict to witness to a drug addict. You don't have to have been a prostitute to witness to a prostitute. You don't, you don't, you, you don't have to have been laying in the gutter to, to witness to somebody that was laying in, 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 in the gutter. All you have to do is understand that, 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 that I have the power to, to, to resist temptation, that I have been delivered, and I have the power to resist any temptation that comes my way. And guess what? I can show you how to have the same thing. I may not have gone through what you went through, but I can show you how to get out of it. I may not, I may not know how it feels to be you, but I can show you and, and, and tell you how it feels to be somebody that has given their life to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. 1 Corinthians 10 and, and 13. It says the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And it's like, you know, I mean, it's like, how can you say that? You don't, you don't know what I've gone through. You don't know what I've been going through. You don't know uh, what's going on in my life not right now. It don't make a difference. The temptation is the same. It's not the sin that we're talking about. It's not your situation. We're talking about the temptation, and your temptation is no different. The devil can't come at you no different. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. He, he, he only got three ways. He, he stuck. And the same way Jesus got out. The same way our brothers and sisters in Christ have gotten out. It's the same way you can get out. Just be. Just be delivered. He said, he said, God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. That's because you connected to him. You have that promise. He won't allow it to be more than you can stand. Why? Because you've submitted yourself to him. You belong to him. Look at this. He said, and, and when you are tempted, he will show you a way out that you can endure. Every time Jesus was tempted, the way out was the word. The way out was what he knew. The way out was not my will, but thine will be done. The way out was to keep, he always kept the focus on God. He always kept the focus on, uh, uh, this is not what God wants. Uh, 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 this is not what God needs. This is not, I'm not, do, I'm not doing this for me. He always kept the focus off of himself and on God. And I'm telling you, you want to you, you wanna make it through the temptations that the devil is sending at you? Keep your focus on God and get them off of you. I know it hurts. I know where you're at. I know how you feel. But keep, get it off of you. The temptations will not be successful if you submit yourself to God and resist the devil. Stand there in it and say, no, I will not. I don't care if you can smell it. Don't take the hit. I don't care if they, everybody around you doing it. Don't you do it. I don't care if everybody around you is cussing. Don't you cuss. Because, it, because the blessing is in the resisting. 
The blessing is not in the pity party. The blessing is in the resisting. I stood, I stood right in it. That's why, that's why you, you, you know, to, to be around the people and then uh, and, and act like everything they're doing is okay, that ain't no resisting in that. There's no resistance in that. Resistance is, is you know, when you look at it, there's, there, there's actually a, a, a pressure that is applied in resistance. You are pulling against the grain. And so it's resistant. You, you know, people feel the resistance. They try to pull you in. It's, oh, I ain't going to die. I ain't doing that. No. It, it, it tightens up. That's resistance. When you, when you, when you all loosey goosey, that ain't no resistance in that. Ain't no, resistance. ain't no resistance in that. You just, you just go along, get along, and you just, you just all up in there. It ain't no resistance. People don't feel that pushback. They don't feel the pressure. See, when you're there, they, they feel the pressure. And that's your job. Because that's what you chose when you chose Jesus. You chose to be a witness for him. And a witness for him has resistance. A witness for him resists. A witness for him applies that pressure so people feel it when you're there. See, the res resisting the devil means resisting everybody that's influenced by the devil. And I, and I want you to understand, your unsaved relatives are influenced by the devil and you're supposed to resist them. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Glad we got our shout on a little bit earlier. Because <laughs> this one is like, wow. Wow. 